Namaskaram. Pranams to everybody. Today we are on the 18th session on Bhagavad Gita. We have completed 9th chapter Raja Vidya Raja Guhya Yogam. We have few more days to go. We have up to December 26th as per schedule. But I think December few days can be disrupted because of other schedules of Dilip Ji. Therefore, we thought if we take and finish, we will not be able to anyway finish up to 18th. We could go up to 12th chapter also. That is what my plan was. Because Bhagavad Gita has got three uh, different segments, if you want to consider it as segments. Though many people may not talk about different segments, but academically, if you want to discuss Bhagavad Gita can be seen as three segments. The Prathama, Madhyama and Charana. Maybe in the Prathama Padam, the first uh, not Padam, one fourth is not there. But in terms of content wise, it is almost one fourth. That is up to chapter one to six. There it's all about Tvam, me, 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 sort of a thing. What is that you have to do? Then, uh, seventh chapter onwards, probably we could consider it as how do you get closer to Bhagavan? Not karma, not uh, nana, but getting slowly to action which can be used for many other people. So, the Suguna part, the Vevaharikam, from there, try slightly going to the higher level. If there is a great Upanishad Vachan which says Tattva Masi, so if you want to look at Tvam Tat Asi, Tvam can be the 1 to 6. Tat, that can be, that is Bhagavan. Tom is me, that is Bhagavan. Asi is the Charana, surrendering with the Bhakti. That can be 13 to 18. There are many ways of looking at it when you look at from not going by sloka by sloka, but slightly away from that. As a panoramic view to understand what Bhagavad Gita is, probably to understand philosophically. So everyone has got problems because of the samsara, daily routine life problems. That is what is the first chapter. Though it can be called as Arjuna Vishada Yogam, we are not Arjuna, we are not in the war field. So how is it? Beneficial to us if somebody asks, we have to talk about it is called the Samsara Varnana. The chapter can be renamed as Samsara Varnana. Rarely we see interpreters talking like this. Let us not keep Arjuna and Krishna in level because we have crossed up to ninth chapter. If we understand, then we know that these are all our Samsara Vishayam, Raga. Shoka, Moha is what Samsara means. Not a Tamil Samsara. Tamil Samsara means wife. Probably this could be the reason to call Tamilians or maybe because Tamilians called a Samsara, whichever is the older one. One of the language in South India is Tamil. Samsara means wife. But here Samskritam, Sanskrit Samsara means Ryagam, my desire, unstoppable desire, because of bondage. Don't use the word attachment. Some text will write attachment. Wherever it is required, must be able to 
translate not as attachment but as bondage. Shokam is whenever you are more dependent on somebody, definitely there can be a shoka. Whoever is closer to us, they are not with me, definitely I feel shoka. They don't talk to me, I feel shoka. They don't love me also, I can feel shoka, depend on the proximity which we have. Why is it happening? It is all because of moha. So I want something out of it. So there are a lot of slokas which explains in the first chapter on Raga, Shoka, Moha. The desire because of bondage, the sorrow which comes out of it and probably Moha is delusion. It is not the factual part. It is all in our mind. So we are not able to control the mind. That is why all these are happening. For some people, they are higher beings, they don't care all this. They can take a deep breath or if they don't breathe also no problem. It doesn't matter. Second chapter is full of knowledge, logic. Therefore, that can be called as the abstract of Bhagavad Gita in which we can see how somebody comes for a counseling I can only take care of the person who surrenders to me not commanding on me so if you want somebody to help you you should not have demands you should only have surrender this talks about how a student has to deal with a master this is a basic knowledge if somebody needs something from a master definitely the student should not demand the student should surrender so arjuna's sharanagadi sharanagadi surrender that is what second chapter starting part then once you surrender definitely the master can give knowledge that nana yoga so what is second chapter first is surrender that means you have full faith no doubt once you have doubt, then you will not surrender. So without doubt, surrender to your master. Here, Arjuna and Krishna. But general terminology, it can be a student and a master. Then once you surrender, what masters gives is jnana, knowledge. Then what is the purpose of this knowledge, which can be used in your actions so karma is important karma is action no knowledge is useful if it cannot be used therefore whatever knowledge is given in second chapter of bhagavad gita that is only practical skill oriented knowledge so the benefit of knowledge keeping in action in mind karma in mind Therefore, second chapter also can be called as the Karma Yoga, the chapter of action, chapter of knowledge. And then, if you get bond, bounded, oh, I am doing this because some X, Y, Z in front of me need some favor from me, or I am helping that person, if in that mood, if I start doing a job, then if that individual become upset, that individual is not in contact or I don't have contact with those people, then I will not enjoy my work. Most of the time this is what happens to people which leads to embarrassment in self. Therefore, you stop your action. Practically, this happens whenever we do something, if the response is not good, because we are all that level B, not the highest level. You assume that I can reach into a higher level and then say, oh, it doesn't matter. Let me keep on doing because I am enjoying it. That state in which you can have, not with the buddhi, not with the emotion, but with the inner self where God is existing. Atma is there, soul is there. You are doing it because your life purpose is that you realize it 
once your life purpose you realized every action which you do is not done because logically it is correct not because you have an emotional attachment to the receiver you are fully devoted and you are enjoying it more so you are enjoying it you are enjoying means you don't question yourself why did you do it maybe superficially you may tell somebody else why you did not attend why you did not come why you did not learn because when a teacher teaches definitely the teacher has got a superficial action which is supposed to be done in the class because he is paid for that all that is fine because i am scheduling a program that time somebody doesn't come definitely yes i expect you to be there that can be the way but why am i doing it the base is i am enjoying i don't care whether 40 people gets benefit or one person gets benefit nobody gets benefit also i am enjoying this talk therefore that state of mind in which you enjoy your job will make you to have no fluctuations in the actions which you do based on the circumstances based on how others are going to look at it you are doing you are enjoying if it is helpful for somebody else yes it's very good if it doesn't help no problem that state of mind is called as tida pratna that tida pratna is what the essence of bhagavad gita second chapter if somebody ask tida pratna and what is that tida pratna i enjoy what i am doing but if i have to enjoy what i am doing what do i require i must know the job if i have to know the job what should i need i must have sufficient knowledge suppose i have sufficient knowledge i can do the job no individual in the world can do any job individually no individual in this world can do any job individually you need a company without a company you cannot do that so who is your company one person who surrenders to you who becomes your companion who is ready to listen to you yes otherwise all this action will not happen so for any action you need somebody who will receive it at least one person and that person should have faith in you then whatever you offer whatever job you do becomes sthida pratna right so th this is what the second chapter second chapter we have done very thoroughly not me once i think most of the time when i did i have invested maximum time in second chapter then the third chapter we had karma yoga for arjuna then how the world is looking at it loga sangraham if you want to call it as how do a person understands the world because it is full of nana knowledge second chapter was sankhyam sankhyam means logic which is logically understood sankhya yoga sankhyam is totally logic there is a reason for doing it that reason is what we have explained now but how do you realize that reason is being yeah happening only when the third chapter karma comes in front of you and you can justify this karma is quite useful that is what is essential without the karma being explained for the purpose of world so world comes first action comes then the world comes and how do you do it with full devotion as a disciple with the sadhana sadhana means practice many times you will have to keep on looking at it how is it done the skill development probably the knowledge will become skill development that is why it became karma karma is possible only when you have skill action is only very superficial skill is repeatedly i am doing it so it becomes very simple for me to do it uh, he is a skilled person means he knows professionally he can do jobs then third chapter is jnana karma sanyasa yoga sanyasa comes into picture what is sanyasa i can burn it inside me it's a burning feeling we say a burning desire that burning desire comes for my jnana and karma that means i am fully into that i cannot go without that fourth chapter is jnana karma sanyasa yoga then see you can see karma sanyaka karma yogam nana yogam karma nana sanyasa yogam 
in the sequence you can see the next chapter is sanyasa yoga right so in the fourth chapter sanyasa uh, sanyasa yoga is coming but fifth chapter is fully dedicated to sanyasa yoga so gnana karma sanyasa yoga gives an introduction to how devotion should be and the sanyasa yoga talks about the nishta the discipline which you want to become a sanyasi how do you practice what lifestyle you require how can you be a real person who does action without the discipline inside so slight introduction of ashtanga yoga ashtanga yoga means eight steps in yogas yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi in that yama niyama asana niyamam discipline that self discipline you can see fifth chapter first shloka first few shlokas then the me and you that will come only when i don't absorb you totally inside so it can be the next few yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara pratyahara means i am surrendering the whole activity around this world i am putting inside me then have concentration that is dharana that dharana also can be seen here because for a sanyasi dharana is essential that is fifth chapter he is into total dharana concentrated into his action so any action which he does becomes totally devotional and what is sixth chapter once it become devotion dharana dhyana seventh step is dhyana here sixth chapter is dhyana so you can see ashtanga yoga which is explained is part of bhagavad gita but most of the people understood the yoga is doing exercise doing pranayama no if you go through bhagavad gita you are at the highest level of yoga because every chapter is yoga 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 and if you understand bhagavad gita then you realize oh all that other magic practices which people follow is very very minimal lkg level so you are now in the pg level understanding all that concept inside dhyana yogam one chapter itself is the seventh step in ashtanga yoga here what is its different aspects of dhyana explained then if you violate if you derail by mistake you lose your track yoga brashta brashta means who has lost his path he is not able to be disciplined in his life what will happen to him and most of us are brashtas because we know what is discipline but we don't do it we know which rail we have to go we don't go there so that is why the sixth chapter is a very practical story of common people how it is going to affect how if you don't do abhyasa practice is not there therefore arjuna is asking lot of questions there and krishna is beautifully telling that you should practice abhyase na to kaundeya vairagena jagrihyate if you don't practice you don't get it that's what bhagavan says so this talks about the real purpose of abhyasa now seventh chapter is gnana vijnana yoga here what is gnanam vijnanam most of the people when they get knowledge they think everything is under my control yeah i know how to cultivate i am an agriculture expert yes you know how to plant you know when to plant expecting rain but how do you know rain comes it's not in your control okay now you water it how do you know the seed can break its skin and then come the seedling will come okay let it come you can protect it how does it i have got a tomato plant which has grown 12 feet generally tomato grows only 2 feet to 1/2 feet i have got a tomato in my kitchen yard which has grown 12 feet but the fruits are not there the fruits are only 1 cm diameter you can imagine 1 cm diameter it looks like small grapes in the tomato whatever i have done 
whatever possible job we tried it which will not give fruits it is not in my hand it is bhagwan's hand so here you realize sometime whatever good things you do the fruits may not come therefore here the sankalpa which i know i know i know and the knowledge which you get skill you get will not give you result unless you have bhakti added to that so seventh chapter talks about the requirement of ishwara ishwara is the god the deva bhagwan and his daya is love towards us is essential if god doesn't love me whatever i do even for god i may do many things but that will not work and that love towards god is called the bhakti devotion so how devoted you are how can you have that samarpana that surrender to bhagwan so that you become his you may love bhagwan that doesn't matter what is essential is you loving bhagwan is not what is essential bhagwan should love you so how do you get that love from bhagwan this is what nana vitnana yoga therefore your knowledge nana will become vitnan higher knowledge eighth chapter talks about akshara brahma yoga charam is every one of us are in charam after some time we will go we have to vacate to this place nothing in this world is permanent what is permanent is only charam is not permanent aksharam means which is permanent so what is aksharam letter is called aksharam knowledge is permanent this text which i am referring and talking to you which was written maybe 10000s of years back which was read by many people the knowledge is being spread because the content is aksharam so what is that which makes our life our action our duty in this world become the highest is understanding what is akshara and you must know how to make it creative brahma is creative so akshara brahma yoga how do you have knowledge and how do you make that knowledge highly creative having done that raja vidya raja guhya yoga there is samarpanam we surrender everything to god with the full bhakti and highly creative with the good knowledge we may do everything but then if you don't know the tactics of surviving in this world that is raja vidya diplomatically you must able to do the job because these are lessons being told to a kshatriya a king a ruler tomorrow if he win the war he is supposed to take care of the world therefore he must know how practically he should be what could be the flop backs failure what you do in such cases all that is being explained 10th chapter we are not done but i will just give a brief as i have given the other chapters where 10th chapter is vibhuti yoga vibhuti means ashes if i am put into fire what i get out of the graveyard we are all supposed to be get fired so once you fire after death which is called dahanam what comes out is an ash that ash is what we are all because we are all going to surrender to god we will become part of the air whenever something burns smoke comes and we become part of the air and what is left in the ground it is only ashes even if i weigh 60 kg or 100 kg once i am burned it will be only 60 grams so during after my death if i am being burned my son is supposed to look at my dead body and ask a question what is that you have done in your life what did you contribute into this world who is supposed to ask the son is supposed to ask me the father what you have contributed in this world vayu anilamamrtamadetam basmandam shariram 
people should feel oh you have contributed to the world that's why great people when they go out of this world when the ashes are come that is spread in the air so that it is distributed to the whole country great prime minister presidents and such people the ashes are distributed or it is put into the water so that the water will take it into the other part of the world so what samarpanam you have with what bhakti you have done how did you reach to that god what devotion you have this is what is being explained in the 10th chapter vibhuti yoga but then having told all this and motivated it also arjuna was not very the student is not very happy sometime why do you learn the history of great warriors so that the other fellow even in army you can see army people defense people are generally very good in talking about stories why do they say the story of earlier war because the juniors will get motivated how do your student should know or why they should know about the teacher because if you don't know the teacher your respect will become less once your respect is less definitely you are not going to listen to them so here what has happened krishna and arjuna are close friends one was not a master another was not a student but now in the war field they took the role of a teacher and a student so do you think the student arjuna will totally get convinced in whatever story krishna says definitely no so arjuna the student is asking krishna the teacher show me how powerful you are so the next chapter is vishwa roopa darshana yoga 11th chapter is a beautiful chapter in which krishna is showing he rules the whole world every god every goddess has every planetary system solar system milky way galaxy the sky the water the fire the air all the five bhudas ground water fire air and devas god everybody is inside me he is really showing that to arjun vishwarupa darshana last class i told it is not first time krishna has definitely did this earlier to his mother also next one with that bhakti comes oh not only to arjuna the whole story is being explained by sanjaya to dhritarashtra there is a mediator who is a driver chariot driver sanjaya sanjaya is explaining the whole thing to his he also is explaining the bhava in which krishna is there and therefore everybody was happy about seeing this very very specific form right the 13th chapter chhatra chhatratna vibhaga yoga this body and the spirit inside how is it related chhatra means the body chhatratna means the soul the atma like in a temple you have a temple structure inside the temple structure you have god so that structure is equivalent to this body in which there is a soul and that soul becomes part of bhagavan so each one of us are like god god is not outside god is inside so bhagavan says every god is inside me similarly in you whomever you have faith that they are inside you. like for example i keep saying where is my mother where is my father they are not in this world but they are all inside me it is in my sankalpa when i think about them that thinking is what the existence so this indirectly says the god concept in india bharatiya shastram sanatana dharma bharata varsha is not physical idol people but it is all sankalpa so concept so that is the real part of chhatra chhatratna vibhaga yogam and in your body because you are constituted with a practical world for a practical purpose and we are in the samsara vishayam our swabhavam 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 
the self how do you uh, deal with the world depends on three characters and that is what is called gunatraya vibhaga yoga that is in the 14th chapter so 14th chapter talks about analysis of the basic character gunam means character character gunam that is also means dharma dharma is also gunam i told you last time sweet has got a dharma sugar is sweet means the sugar has got a dharma and that is its property so property dharma character all that is what is it making to behave like that so all of us have got three different gunas and what are the gunas being explained here they are satvik rajasik tamasik what is satvik being very kind compassion all the good qualities if you want to assign to somebody that is called a satvik what is rajasik how do you manage become a manager how do you become a teacher how do you become a master how do you become a policeman how do you rule the country how do you become a mother who is very strict at home definitely you have rajasik quality there then what is tamasik i don't care i am only a servant you tell me i will do it if you don't tell me i will keep quiet i don't do anything many people are tamasik in the world so they don't improve so guna you are from tamasik you have to come to rajasik not being active you should become active first and that active person should have sufficient knowledge to reach into higher level so that whatever he does whatever he thinks become highly spiritual so satvik is the way to get into spirituality okay so these gunas are being explained in the chapter which is called guna guna means character traya tri vibhaga yoga vibhaga means division so guna traya vibhaga character is three divided into and then analyzed in this chapter 15th chapter is purushottama yoga which guna which character what sort of activity what sort of um, distribution you require for you become purusha uttam a human being with ultimate quality that is what is called a purushottama so who can become a purushottama how do a human being get into the highest purushottama here many times the brahman 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 used brahman is not a brahmana brahman is who can understand brahma who is highly creative a first quality of a human being is he is kind human he is social he does every action for somebody else but most important is he has to be creative if i have lot of knowledge i am not creative that is why in most of our examination in every competitive exam generally what is asked is not your knowledge to get a certificate knowledge is good enough but to get a job they look for logical reasoning analytical skill data analysis decision making ability these are all what gives you so actually if you want to know how do you become a real human being all these qualities are what makes you creative and that creativity is called a brahman so how do somebody have got that ability to become close to brahman that is being explained in the purushottama yoga 15th chapter then and then the 16th chapter is deva asura sambat vibhaga yoga deva asura there are two characters deva sankalpa and asura sankalpa deva sankalpa is what is noble good kind living for somebody else in the world asura is how do you live and disturb everybody else in the world so asura sankalpa and deva sankalpa and this combination don't get confused with the rajasik satvik tamasik there can be satvik people who oh, they are very kind very clever but they are very clever that means they are satvik with asuri quality you can be very rajasik very strict teacher but his all action can be devik for somebody's purpose to get to give benefit to somebody else he may scold but that scolding is rajasik but his action is devika sankalpa is devika so deva sankalpa deva sambat asura sambat there are two types 
So becoming very pious is not what Bhagavan says. You have to be sometimes very strict to where you have to be. Because ultimate aim is what is essential. So here the confusion of a common person how to behave in this world is being cleared in the 16th chapter. Right? 16th chapter is Deva Asurya Sambat Vibhaga Yoga. That is your Sambat. That is your accumulated knowledge. Accumulated ability. Practiced activity which is beneficial for the world is Sambat. Not for you. Your basic quality Rajasik, Tamasik, Satik. Sambat is what you can distribute to others. Sambat is what I can distribute. So my distribution can be Asurik or Rajasik. How others get to benefit how others will get it not to benefit it. That is how it is developed. What a beautiful structure of looking at human life. I don't think any book in the world. That is why Bhagavad Gita is very famous. That is why Bhagavad Gita is like. That is why Bhagavad Gita is learned by most of the people. And if you just read it and only look at with the normal practice of chanting it and then understanding it only in the bhakti level without going into a logical analysis like this, we are actually doing a big waste of time and crime. So some people start sending me saying that this is a beautiful Bhagavad Gita. I just smile at them saying that what, uh, how, how did they understood? Did they understood this is the logical method to be understand? So talking about the Bhagavad Gita, chanting a lot of people will chant. They may not even reach one grade level. It's like a, uh, a, any song which you sing without understanding the meaning. Not at all enough. So you must understand the essence and go into that. There are a lot of people who teach. But so pathetic. They don't understand the inner concept of all this. Chapter 17. Sraddhatraya Vibhaga Yoga. Sraddhatraya. Sraddha is required. How do you have Sraddha? That Sraddha. Which Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. Sat. Understand actually what is that Sat. The sense of reality. With all that power inside. Therefore you need to have sufficient knowledge about Sraddha. The faith. Aharam. The food. Therefore 15th chapter already Aharam is explained. Based on the Purushottama Yoga. How people have to eat is also explained there. And then worship. How Yetna is to be done. And tapa, how austerity is must, how damam, how charity has to be done. All these are explained with what sadhana you must do it so that you become better and better in your life. That is what sraddhatrayam, concentration. And 18th chapter, the last chapter, moksha sannyasa yoga. What is moksha sannyasa yoga? With this sadhana, how you understand the karma, action, the essence of karma, the beauty of karma and the beauty of knowledge. All that together with that dhyanam, how do you make it so beautiful in every action which you do with full bhakti devotion so that what comes to you, you get total bliss. That is what is moksha. Moksha is happiness which is permanent inside you. And that happiness which you attain, moksha, happiness, sannyasam with all the devotion, how do you get this is what is being explained in the 18th chapter. So this is what Bhagavad Gita is. We have explained in the first class. The whole Bhagavad Gita starts with a question. And End of Bhagavad Gita is with the answer. Same thing. What is the question? Who will win? The question is Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mahamaka Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvada Sanjaya. This is what Dhridharashtra is asking the blind man. All of us are blind. Asking the chariot driver who is driving us locally. Not permanently. To, permanent driver is Bhagavan. That is not with the blind people. The blind people have only the law class. That not knowledgeable. But little bit of knowledge he has because he has travelled across as a driver. Therefore Sanjay is such a driver. And he has blessed to be a driver by a bigger driver. 
Therefore, Sanjay has got some immunity. So to him, the blind person is asking, Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yuyutsavaha, Mamaka, Pantavaschaiva, Kimakuru Vata Sanjay. The answer is given in the 18th chapter, 78th sloka. What is that answer? Yatra Yogeshwara Krishno. So the first chapter, 1-1. One, one. Sloka number 1, first chapter, 1.1. One. Answer is 18th chapter, 78th sloka. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishno. Yatra Partho Dhanur Dharaha. Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhudir. Dhruva Nidir Madhir Mamaham. Wherever Krishna is there, who is a Yogeshwara? Who understood all these Yoga Shastra which we explained? Because he is the man who explained. Therefore, he is the Yoga Ishwara. The powerful person who is holding the Yoga in him. That Krishna. But that Yoga is not good enough. Unless you make it into practice, action. So who is making this into practice? Yatrapartho Dhanur Dharaha. Who is a practical man. Like Arjuna, a practical person. Who has the blessings of this God with all the yoga power inside him? Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhudir Dhruva Nidhar Madhar Mamaha. There Sri will come, Vijayam will come, the presence of God will be there, blessings will be there, prosperity will be there. Bhudi Dhruva Nidhar Madhar Mamaha. That is where this end of Bhagavad Gita. That is what Bhagavan says. So I thought I will take half an hour but I took 40 minutes today. Therefore this is the level 1 Bhagavad Gita. Good enough.